Hello everybody, welcome to the Shelton Focus from me, Daryl Carter from RacingTips.com. Loads of action to pick up, that's happened over Christmas. Shelton Festival's getting ever nearer, things are really hotting up. I hope you had a wonderful time with your friends and family at Christmas. I wish you a happy new year, but time to get down to business. We're going to review one race in particular, I'm going to pick up all the results and give you the updated prices on the horses over the Christmas period. Uh, and then I'm gonna pop an anti-post bet and answer a couple of your questions at the end. So thank you very much for joining me and we'll kick straight on with it. And the race I wanna talk about this week is the Racing Post Novice Arkle. And the reason I wanna talk about that is because three direct winners that have won this race have gone on to win at Cheltenham in the Arkle. Um, in 2010, 2013, 2016 and 2018, this race produced horses that placed in the first three. So it's a really good Arkle trial. In fact, it's the best one in Ireland. So, Notebook was an impressive winner. Our 25 to one anti-post um, selection was a really good winner of the race at a price of around seven to one. Now, the race was won in four minutes, 16 seconds, and we can compare it to a handicap chase on the same card. Now, it was only a weak enough handicap chase. Drum Connor Lad won the race. He's only rated 126. But he ran it in 4 minutes, 21 seconds. And it's not about the speed or the time. It's just seeing whether it was a truly run race. And that it was, guys. From the second to the tenth fence, the grade one was two seconds faster overall than the handicap chase. And then from the 10th to the final fence, they picked up the speed again and jumped in the last, they were four seconds quicker. And he was a second quicker up the home straight than the handicap chase was. And overall, 5.5 seconds quicker. Um, now, the reason we need to know that is to know that it was a truly run race, not stop start gallop, uh, because the Arkle at Cheltenham is a speedster's game and it is held for leather from start to finish. Now, one thing we must know is Fakir de Dowd usually finished second. Mark Walsh's rider between the 10th and the 11th, where the pace quickened, he did just lose an iron, catching it on another rider's um, iron itself. But one thing to note is that Fakir de Dowd was not closing on notebook at the finish. He was the same distance behind him as he was jumping the last, as he was at the finish line. Also, big thing to note, the reason... Horse, five-year-old horses cannot win the Arkle, or have not won the Arkle, because they've been getting this seven-pound weight allowance throughout the whole of the season, and at the turn of the year, that's when they lose it. Which means, Notebook was given Fagley Dowdy seven pounds this day, and in the Arkle at Cheltenham, he will be seven pounds better off for a one and three-quarter length win over Fagley Dowdy's. So, we're in a really good position with a 25 to one on Notebook. I think he's the Arkle winner. I can't see many other dangers to him at this present time. Talking of dangers, Mellon ran in a beginner's chase, beating Gallian John Joe, who's only rated 137. Now, Mellon made a mistake at the last fence, battled on Gamey up the hill to run away a winner. But what worries me more is why Willie Mullins did not send Mellon to the Racing Post Novice Arkle. Now, this is the race that Lariesburg won last year before being pulled from the Arkle because of an injury. But Footpad, Min and Duvan all, run the, all won this race going on to victory at Cheltenham. Obviously, Min bumped into Altil, but was best of the rest there. Global Citizen won the other um, trial chase at Kempton. It won the Wayward Lad Novices chase. Normally a good indicator for, a, for an Arkle horse. However, they have all been trained by Nicky Henderson. So it's Nicky Henderson's sort of springboard for his Arkle horses. But... Global Citizen is a flat track bully. You'd be disappointed should he go on to Cheltenham and win. As for the rest in behind, forget about it. They've got absolutely no chance in this sort of race. That then brings us on to Brian's question about Marie Van Rye. Is Marie Van Rye a value punt at 25 to 1 for the Arkle? Unfortunately, Brian, in my opinion, the answer is no. The reason the answer is no is because before running into Thomas Darby, where she beat him by a length, she had only beaten a horse, horses rated up to 114. Okay, now she has stepped forward and progressed a little bit more than that, including when beating Thomas Darby, who was a 150 rated hurdler, not a chaser. However, every runner bar one other runner in the field was having their first start of the season that day. Marie Van Roy jumped foot perfect, was race fit. Thomas Darby made five ground losing errors at his fences, um, clattering a fair few. And he still got to within a length of Marie Van Roy. She stole five lengths at the beginning of that race. Now, she's been beaten at Battersley Knight today, but I would not even consider 
Badgersley Knight in the first 20 horses to be running in the Arkle for me. Now she does jump really well. My biggest concern with her would be is if she did clip at the top of one, or she did make a slight mistake. Is she good enough? Has she got enough in, in under the bonnet in her engine to get back up and out battle a rival? I'm not entirely sure she has. I think she's been very well placed by the skeletons. So Marie Van Rye, for me, you can have 60 to 1 if you want, Brian. Not a chance. Right, moving on. Picking up Limerick. Easy work, mate. Easy work of unaccepted. I think because the video is nowhere to be found. So I can't find that yet. We'll move on to we'll move on and bring that up next week. Fahim, 10 to 1 in the JLT. Same price as Sam Crow after defeating him at the weekend. Sam Crow, I'm getting fed up and trying to make excuses for him, find reasons why he didn't perform. It's just an enigma, that horse. Fury Road is 12 to 1 for the Albert Bartlett after making a mistake at the last hurdle. Um, and I'm glad he did because he was travelling, pulling double like he had loads left. He clipped the top of that last hurdle and all of a sudden, push come the sharp. He didn't have as much left as he would like you to think. Um, but he got the job done anyway. Looks a nice type. Leopard's Tower, obviously we spoke about Notebook. Aspire Tower, 7 to 1 favourite for the Triumph Hurdle. Looks a pretty useful horse. Did beat similar horses to he beat on debut. I'd like to see him step up in grade and step up in company uh, before backing him. Abacadabras does not do a lot in front, but he's now the 4 to 1 favourite for the Supreme Novice Hurdle. Be a slight concern that he travels so well and then finds absolutely nothing in front. He ran down the final hurdle and just sort of cajoled his way home. He's definitely a talented horse, but I think he's one worth taking on. But we'll get to that in another week. A Plutard turned over Shackle Poissoir. The undefeated Shackle Poissoir was beaten by Plutard. And there looked to be no real obvious excuses for Shackle Poissoir. Perhaps he'll come on for the run. But a Plutard, 7-1 to one for the right now. I think that's definitely the race he's going to go for. If you fancy him, I would not put you off Shackle. I would not put you off a Plutard at all. Champion Chase, 10-1. to one. I think they are going to drop back to two miles. Again for his next start, but I think they've always had the Ryan Air in their sights for that horse. At Kempton, Fred won the novice hurdle, he's 40 to 1 for the Supreme. Slate House won the Corto Star. Um, I thought he was going to win it, win it really well. He came down to the second last, was pushing clear until just steadied into the final fence, made a slight mistake, gave Black Off a chance to get up alongside. The two battled on really well, but Slate House is a likeable type. Whether he's good enough to go all the way to be an RSA winner. It's still up for debate, but he's 14 to 1 for that race if you fancy him. Epitomp was definitely my eye catcher over Christmas. I thought she was outstanding. Her turn of foot is deadly. She travels so well. She jumps her hurdles very low, very fast, very boomer S. Really like Epitomp. Think she's outstanding. Clan is over 8 to 1. And short as 5 to 1 for the gold cup in places after landing the King George. Christ, bookies don't learn their lesson. Please don't be back in Clan de Zobo for Cheltenham. Guys, we know he loves Kempton. He was really impressive, but he's not going to win a Gold Cup. End of. Lost in translation, out to 10 to 1. Very good price, that, in my opinion. Delta work and presenting Percy clashed in the Savills chase over at Leopardstown as well. Delta work came out on top with a nice performance, out battling his rivals at the finish. He's 10 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Presenting Percy, a big eye catcher in that race. He is 14 to 1. Where else have we got? Apples J. <clears throat> Bounced back to form. Now 12 to 1 for the Stayers Hurdle. Jumped markedly right out of a lot of her hurdles. Um, she had cheap pieces on for the first time. I wonder if that's just helped her. I hope she goes to Cheltenham, but only because she'll be shorter than what she should be. Um, Madison Hurdle, in terms of the champion hurdle, was won by Sharjah on good ground. Classical Dream made that really bad error. Looked like he might have hurt himself there. Uh, that clearly took a toll on his race. But he is a very quirky classical dream, and I certainly wouldn't have him so close to the head of the market. He's a big drifter this week. He's out to 10 to 1 in places. But that sort of rounds up our week. If I missed anything, let me know. But, Christ, there's so much to get through. It's been exciting. Things are unravelling. Cheltenham is not far away. Just got a few questions that a few of you put towards me. Uh, just, just a comment on, I suppose. Goshin. Is Goshin one for the Triumph Hurdle? Uh, is Goshin... He looks a big, powerful horse. A really nice horse. But I think right-handed tracks are certainly going to be his thing. Perhaps Punchestown, they want to go there afterwards. But he does jump markedly right. Even at Sandown, he was still jumping right on a right-handed track. 
If you go back and watch his debut, you'll see how violent he was out to the right. That is going to cost him plenty of ground. Champ, does Champ win the RSA? Yes, Champ does win the RSA. That's an easy one. Stormy Island ran really well today. Again, yes, but grade three level is her bread and butter. We've learned our lesson with Stormy Island. She just needs to be very well placed. She's not going to be a Cheltenham Festival winner. There's too many other good horses that are better than Stormy Island and all mankind. Is he going to win at the festival? I think he's a really nice type. I just think there's going to be something else that comes out that's a little bit better than him. He likes to dictate from the front. Will he get his own way at the festival? It remains to be seen. Wait until the day. He's short enough at 7 to 1. But that's it, guys. Thank you very much for listening. I have got to put up an anti-post bet. This is the last part of this video. And it is going to be Epiton for the champion hurdle. Now, you're going to call me mad. We're back in her at three to one, but we're putting ourselves in the best possible position because Honeysuckle is already on our list at a big price, a big double figure price. So if we can get Everton on there as well, three to one, I think seems fair. Sharjah wants good ground. Classical Dreams a nutcase. Uh, Pennant Hills, we've yet to see what he can do. I think we know where we are with Everton. That low hurdling, that quick turn of foot, that powerful travelling style. Thinks she's going to take all the beating this year. J.P. McManus and Nicky Henderson. So, Epiton, 3-1. to one, This week's anti-post bet for the champion hurdle. Let's get ourselves in the best possible position. Have a wonderful week. Have a great New Year. Let's hope Champ does the business on New Year's Day. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>